I make myself feel so guilty. I love the idea of a daily journal, but whenever I miss a few days or let's face it, weeks or months, I make myself feel so guilty that I didn't stick to it. Hi, my name is Bibi, and I'm going to be taking you along for a page in my daily journal today. Now, lately, I have been pretty good about adding to it, but this is not always the case. In fact, uh, shortly before these entries, there wasn't something in there for the previous couple months. It doesn't mean that I didn't create, it just means I didn't add to this journal. Lately, this has felt like a really nice place to just add a little bit of something every day. And I love the idea of a daily journal because when you go and look back on it, you can see trends of different things, whether it be the colors that you use, the style, the techniques. And, and it's a great way to go back and see what you were inspired by at the moment or what we can get re-inspired by. So lately, I've been using a whole lot of neutral tones, more muted colors, and it just feels quite calming to me to be using those. So it'll be fun to have this documentation to look back on. This page today is done on a piece of vellum, which is always a fun choice because it's see-through and it just gives a totally different appearance to it. You can get a bit of a sense of what's behind it, whatever page comes next. And I started out with a handmade stamp in the background and let it be a little bit grungy, not perfect. And now I have a piece of fabric that has some different paint on it and I'm adding in some skinny stitches here. So just a thread that has two layers to it rather than um, embroidery floss, which has all six. I go back and forth whether I like the more chunky look or want this kind of uh, just art marks, really kind of scratchy type look. I love both and on this one it just feels fun to think about them being like little uh, pencil or pen marks here that add to it. I like to go back and forth whether I am stitching on the piece by itself or stitching through the entire uh, page that it's on and I usually do a mixture even within the same spread. So I'm adding in these ones now because I don't know how this is going to be attached to the page yet. I'm thinking there needs to be something underneath it but at this point I'm not sure what it is. So instead of letting that stop me from continuing because sometimes we have a sense that that's going to happen. I just went in and started some stitching, knowing that I could come back later and add more. So I am going to build up a few little layers here. I don't want to add too much because I do love the vellum paper, like I mentioned, so I don't need a whole lot going on. But putting this darker piece behind it will help it stand out a bit more. And then I'm also echoing those dots that I had made in the background with a piece of tissue paper. I'm going to continue on that circle route, but just in another format. So here I have a white china marker, and I'm holding my pencil really loosely and kind of towards the end. That way I can get some kind of abstract marks. I'm not going for perfection here, but just a little bit more interest in the background. But really paying attention to the transparency of the background and not wanting to cover a bunch of that up. So my choices are really deliberate that I'm making. Something that ties everything together for me a lot of times is a bit of grunge. And one of my best ways to add that in is with either the Stabilo All or the Stabilo Woody. I find myself going for the Woody quite often because it is nice and chunky. And I put that down in the background and then I came in with a wet paintbrush and just spread some of that around. There was quite a bit of water then on the page, so I did soak some of that up with another piece of fabric. And then that fabric is ready to go for something else, which is kind of fun. I did tape that page down just really gently to my work surface. Vellum has a way of kind of curling up on itself once it's wet and then once you hit it with the heat gun. So that was just a temporary solution for me. I want to add in more stitching here, and I liked these white 
uh, circles that I had done. So now I'm gonna go around and kind of accent them a little further. I'm creating these stitch marks and they're right inside of those circles. And it kind of is just a nice echo of the shape that I've already done. It accentuates it and brings a little bit more attention to it, but in a different way. Rather than with the um, wanting it to be more bold, with the white china marker again going over it around and around and around, which is a great approach because I love that scribbly type look. This is another way to go about it where it does make it a lot bolder. You can see against the black, it really helps it stand out. Plus we're adding in texture. On this one, I'm using all six strands of an embroidery floss. So it does stick out more than the other stitches. And that's a great way to look at stitching is it's never all the same. You can change it up in so many different ways, whether you're just using a single strand of thread, whether you're using six or what type of thread it could be, you can also change how you're stacking your stitches. For example, on that first piece of fabric, I was kind of going a little bit more linear, straight little stitches all stacked next to each other. Here, I'm going around and following a shape. So it's all a little bit different and you get different results based on how you're doing your stitching and how you're um, formatting it on the page and where you're putting them. So I'm going, even where it's not dark paper in the background, just where that vellum is, I like the appearance that you can kind of see the stitches that are on the background. And going over on this section too, you notice that I'm going even underneath the place where I'm gonna be putting that fabric down, partly because I don't know exactly where that fabric is gonna go yet, but also you'll still get a little bit of that texture when you do that. And another main reason for me is I don't want those stitches to look like they just started and stopped. I want them to flow underneath that focal point and come out on both sides. And I think it just creates a nicer flow to the overall page when you let stuff go under other things on top of some things. And we're not just always adding on top. We're trying to really integrate things in. I want a little bit more grunge and this is a great example too. I had done grunge under it, but I think some grunge on top would be awesome and you can see I even put it over some of that white stitched area so it actually dyed that thread a little bit so now some areas are a little bit more bold white than others and they have kind of that gray black grunge brought in which I love I use just regular glue to put this piece of fabric down and kind of scrunched it in some area so that it didn't lay perfectly flat one of the great things about using fabric in your work is it's really easy to create extra touch texture and dimension, but it's also easy to really flatten it out like you would a piece of paper when you're adding it in for collage or kind of a focal point like this. So I purposely took it and kind of scrunched it so that it now dries with a couple ridges and bumps in it. So now I have attached that fabric piece. I'm adding a little bit more of that skinny black stitching, those just little art marks there. And I needed it up top. See, before I had thought about doing it up top, but I just wasn't sure yet if that's what I wanted. So now this is the perfect chance to come back and do it. And I'm actually bringing it off of that fabric piece onto the paper behind it, which it just makes it so it all just carries and flows really nicely and integrates it all in. So I'm really happy with the way that this page turned out. I love the vellum. It can be a little bit of a challenge because you do have to think a little bit differently, but I love the results of this one and how it turned out. And for me, you can never go wrong with a black and white spread. I'm putting it in my journal here and that was a spread in my daily journal. See you guys next time. Have a good one.